I mentioned my FDA approved toothbrush, that's a health and safety regulation as well. Health and safety regulation is the biggest single chunk of regulation in terms of federal, re federal activity. Uh, there are also environmental regulations. Some of those are directly intended to improve health and safety, uh, like uh, getting particulates and other stuff out of the air that do cause pretty significant health problems. Other environmental re regulations are not so much linked to human health and safety as they are linked to a broader desire to protect something in the environment in general. So, for example, uh, regulations that are intended to protect endangered species, the links between that and human health and welfare are a little bit tenuous, but really the value that was driving those regulations was, was not so much if we protect endangered species, humans are healthier, but rather, well, we want to protect endangered species because you know, we don't think it's right for us to be uh, knocking off other species. So, sometimes environmental regulations are motivated by health and safety concerns. Sometimes they're motivated by other types of values people are concerned about, and sometimes it's blank. Uh, there are civil rights regulations that you know, try to, try to uh, prevent folks from discriminating on the basis of you know, race, religion, and so forth. Uh, there's, not really, there's not a huge amount of federal money spent on those. A lot of the enforcement of those happens as a result of lawsuits in the private sector, but that is an important part of regulation. And the three that I mentioned just now, health and safety, environmental, and civil rights, are often grouped together and referred to as uh, social regulation. And then finally there are transfer regulations. These are regulations issued by agencies that basically spend money or collect taxes and the, regu the regulations they issue lay out how they're going to collect taxes or how they're going to spend money. Uh, so that's a little bit different from some of these other forms of regulation. But the Internal Revenue Service regulations that implement you know, the entire tax code and also federal agencies like the Department of Health and Human Services, one of their big activities is, of course, spending money, um, administering uh, programs like Medicare and Medicaid. A lot of the way that that money is spent is driven by formulas written into legislation, and then the agency is responsible for issuing regulations that implement and update that formula when they pass out the money. Uh, similarly, uh, dis federal disaster aid. Uh, a lot of times if new federal disaster aid is made available, technically the Federal Emergency Management Administration has to issue a set of regulations laying out how people can apply for that disaster aid and what the ground rules are. So those things are regulations, but they basically elaborate on how the federal government's going to spend money. Well, there are five big trends in regulation that I think anybody who wants to study this or is even just a little curious about, about it ought to know about. And so I'm going to spend the rest of the time uh, that I'm supposed to be talking just giving you a little information on those trends. The first big trend is uh, what's implied by this graph right here, which is um, a reduction in certain types of economic regulation. This is federal expenditures on industry-specific economic regulation. By the way, a lot of these graphs, well, a lot of this, these graphs on spending come out of a publication called The Regulator's Budget, which is jointly put together every year and updated by the Mercatus Center and the Wiedenbaum Center at St. Louis University. If you go to the Mercatus webpage, you will probably find this still on the front page because the latest version just came out last week. But in any case, if you look at money spent on industry-specific economic regulation, you find that it increased through the 60s, and then in the 70s it started falling. And it bounced up a little bit, bounced down. But you have, you have this big drop-off throughout the 70s and into the 1980s. That largely reflects the deregulation, congressional and presidential decisions to deregulate prices and entry in transportation industries like railroads and trucking and airlines, uh, in communications, telecommunications, uh, and also certain energy industries like natural gas where the federal government, for example, no longer controls the price of natural gas. Uh, it's it's set, in, set through competition in the market. Uh, there's these, there's this, there was this cluster of these infrastructure industries where a lot of scholarly research in the 60s and the 70s pretty much demonstrated that the principal effect of government regulation in these competitive industries was to enforce cartels, to enforce monopolies, and rip off consumers. And that's why the two of the principal political figures who pushed this deregulation of those industries in the 1970s, particularly the transportation industries, were President Jimmy Carter and, and uh, Senator Ted Kennedy. Uh, I mean, Ted Kennedy was the, the principal sponsor, for example, of the airline deregulation, uh, the, the airline deregulation bill. And subsequent
subsequent, oh, here's, here's the uh, figures on regulatory personnel that shows you a similar kind of thing. Um, you know, big reduction, gradual reduction in regulatory personnel who were involved in industry-specific regulation. And pretty much all the academic research, whether it's by economists who are kind of on the left, kind of on the right, kind of in the middle, these figures all came out of studies done by the, the Brookings Institution in Washington, uh, which is often regarded as, as kind of left to center, although I think, I think it's pretty much a middle of the road type place. But in any case, uh, if you look at the effects on consumers of these kinds of economic deregulation, what you typically find is very large price increases, significant other benefits such as improvements in the quality of service, improvements in the timeliness of service, and when economists have gone and tried to quantify all that, um, in 1995 dollars, it ended up coming out to around $60 billion a year, year total. If you adjust that today, we're talking, you know, $75, $80, $80 dollars or so in annual benefits that consumers get through lower prices and better service as a result of the deregulation that occurred in these industries. This is basically uh, what's going, what is driving that reduction in spending and personnel on economic regulation. Really interesting thing is, even the Federal Office of Management and Budget and its guidance, docu guidance documents for uh, regulatory agencies pretty much encapsulates what's kind of the conventional wisdom among economists when it comes to government regulation of prices or entry or terms of service in industries that are competitive. The OMB's guidance to agencies says, in light of both economic theory and actual experience, a particularly demanding burden of proof is required to demonstrate the need for any of the following types of regulations. And it's essentially regulations of prices and quantities and quotas and things in industries that could be competitive. So even at the highest levels of, of folks in the federal government that review federal regulation, it's pretty much accepted that, yeah, that kind of economic regulation that puts government in the business of enforcing cartels and monopolies probably isn't a good thing for consumers, and we should be pretty suspicious of it unless there's some other public interest reason for doing it uh, separate from the effect on, on uh, prices and consumer welfare. So that's one big trend, this big drop in economic regulation. Big trend number two is very large increases in social regulation, both the health and safety regulation and the environmental regulation. Uh, here's federal spending on social regulation, uh, which is again, you know, kind of a gradual climb, then here we hit that point in 72 again uh, with Richard Nixon where it starts climbing during Nixon and Carter, falls under Reagan, starts going back up again under Bush, accelerates a little under Clinton, uh, big spike due to Homeland Security regulations and so forth. Uh, the, if you look at uh, social regulatory personnel, it's pretty much a similar pattern where the number of people involved in social regulation has generally increased over time. The only anomaly is during the Reagan years. So we have generally in increases in, uh, in social regulation. The, the thing that surprised me the most, I mean, an awful lot of the uh, really furious battles in the nation's capital are over environmental regulation. The thing that surprised the heck out of me when I looked at these figures that I didn't know until I started preparing this talk was that if you look at personnel war expenditures on environmental regulation, you have a fairly gradual increase and the really big, the really big amount and the really big increases have been on, in the uh, health and safety related stuff, whether it's you know, workplace safety, uh, consumer product safety, homeland security, that kind of thing. Okay, that brings us to uh, big trend number three, increased security regulation. This is, this is the biggest jump.